present to you today Franconia Notch. 400 million years in the making. 400 million years of revolving seasons. 400 million years of days. Rainy days. Sunny days. Snowy, icy, bitterly cold days. Days like this day. Each day bringing a myriad of small alterations by water and wind, frost and gravity, ice and fire from the center of the earth. 400 million years of daily change. When you see Franconia Notch today, remember, it will never be quite the same again. These are ancient mountains, older than the Rockies, older than the Alps or Himalayas. When they were young, their peaks were jagged, their valleys steep and narrow. Three million years ago, Franconia Notch was a treacherous rift between towering cliffs. Then the Earth's climate cooled. More snow fell than the short summers could melt away. The burden of ice and snow built up upon the continent. An ice sheet moved down from the Northlands and swallowed these mountains up. Gravity and the force of its own weight made its footing pour out from under it, scouring the hidden land as it went. For two million years, a river of ice and snow carved its way slowly through Franconia Notch. A river that topped its mountain banks on either side. When the ice retreated, the land was changed. The narrow ravine was a wide U-shaped valley. The jagged peaks were shorn off and rounded down to the granite bedrock. Nature isn't finished with this place yet. Landslides change the shapes of valleys, and rivers carve their way down from the mountaintops, rearranging the land. Frost action chiseled out a famous profile and still moves the granite cliffs. When you see Franconia Notch today, remember, it will never be quite the same again. Nature is not the only force at work in Franconia Notch. In the last 200 years, people have changed this valley too. The Native American tribes who may have used the notch left no record. The early settlers found easier routes to the coastal towns. But by 1800, the mountain communities wanted a shorter journey to the trading centers of Portsmouth and Boston. The new road through the notch opened up the area. A magnificent profile was discovered on the cliffs of Cannon Mountain. The notch was pristine in its primitive beauty. It was just beyond the doorstep of civilization. Word of its particular charms spread, and tourism became its growth industry. Hotels sprang up, and by the mid-1800s, Franconia Notch was high society's favorite vacation spot. There were rail connections from Boston to Franconia. The hills were grand, their furnishings elegant, their cuisine sophisticated. Thousands of people traveled here each summer. In 1900, the 6,000 acres that now comprise Franconia Notch State Park were in the hands of private landowners. The Notch wilderness had become a commercial enterprise. Its future depended upon its gate receipts. When the Flume attraction failed to bring in enough money to meet expenses, 
the owners allowed logging companies to cut down and sell the timber that covered the mountainsides. The Franconia Notch Wilderness was under siege. The first great conservation effort in New Hampshire was the campaign to save the forests of the Notch. The state offered to pay $200,000 for the land, but the owners wanted twice that amount. A society launched a campaign to raise the additional money. In less than a year, 15,000 people from all over the country answered the call to save a tree in Franconia Notch, and the $200,000 was raised, mostly in dime and dollar contributions. Throughout the 20th century, there has been a controversy over the care and use of Franconia Notch. Accessibility to tourists and preservation of wilderness continue to be issues at odds with each other. For over 30 years, the most debated of these conflicting issues has been the road through Franconia Notch. Substandard and dangerous, the old road could not handle the growing flood of visitors. But many people feared that a four-lane highway built to federal specification would destroy the Notch. After years of serious and often painful negotiations, a unique solution was reached. For more than 10 miles, the four-lane interstate becomes a two-lane parkway that preserves the wilderness setting while providing visitors safe and efficient access to the wonders of Franconia Notch. The parkway is special because there is only one other such variance to the federal highway standards in the United States. The 45 mile per hour speed limit is crucial within the boundaries of the park. The no stopping, no passing, no left turning regulations on the parkway itself are specific rules that ensure an accident free visit for everyone. Convenient and ample parking areas at each attraction allow visitors to view and experience the notch fully and safely. Designated bicycle paths provide a secure route pedaling through the notch and cyclists can enjoy the sounds and sights of the valley at a more leisurely pace. A brochure highlighting the parkway and the park's natural features is available free at our information desk. Unlike most geological forces, our alterations of the land move quickly. So construction of the parkway had to be a precise and careful undertaking. The granite cliffs were monitored constantly for stress and movement as the new road was carved into the valley floor. Every decision, every action was thought through carefully. The result is a park designed to encourage visitors to act in the same deliberate way. To experience Franconia Notch without harming its ancient and fragile wonders. But it's been designed for enjoyment as well. Signs throughout the Notch have information, facts, and legends explaining the valley and how it has come to be. Four hundred million years have left their marks on Franconia Notch. Thirty years of park development have made it possible for visitors to see and understand the extraordinary record of those years. The effort to understand the vastness of four hundred million years, the feeling of wonder at seeing granite defy the laws of gravity, a view across the breathtaking expanse of mountain peaks can be a challenge to test ourselves against such a place, to see it and ourselves more clearly. Well, it takes a total concentration, meaning 100% concentration on, on one task, that is finding the right holes to move up on the rock. So there's no, you have to concentrate so hard, there's no room for other little distractions and thoughts. Rock, now washed by wind under a clear blue sky, was once washed by salt water under an ancient sea. Nearby volcanic mountains spewed out fire and molten minerals. You'll find the evidence at the flume, a canyon once filled with lava, eroded away now by the tumbling river. 
The din of the rushing water now fills the space once filled with fiery rock in the center of the earth. The power of water to wear down and reshape is evident throughout Franconia Notch. At the basin, the swift waters of the Pemajawasset bore away at a pothole gouged out of granite by the glacier 25,000 years ago. Mount Lafayette dominates the skyline for campers at Lafayette Place. From this central location, hikers of all abilities can begin their exploration of Franconia Notch. A short afternoon's walk up the side of Cannon Mountain will reward the family with a jewel of a mountain lake and a spectacular view across the notch to the glistening summit of Mount Lafayette. The forests are home to a wide variety of birds and small animals. The hardwoods of the valley floor give way to the hardy scrub evergreens clinging to the mountainsides finding shelter and root holes in rocks and overhangs. Delicate alpine flowers bloom briefly and brilliantly in their short seasons, defying harsh winds, freezing rains, and thin rocky soil. They cannot, however, survive human interference. The bouquet quickly wilts. A photograph endures. Suspended 1,200 feet above the valley floor, the old man of the mountain keeps vigil over the notch. This granite formation was first sighted almost 200 years ago. The freeze and thaw action that created this granite sculpture is the same action that threatens to destroy it. In 1916, a system of turnbuckles was installed to keep the gigantic stones in place. Today, regular maintenance forestalls the inevitable effects of gravity and weathering. Niels Nielsen and his family have been taking care of the old man since 1960. They know the gentleman well. I have great conversations with him. As a matter of fact, there was one time when I was getting ready to move over under his nose and it was a little windy and I really didn't feel too comfortable. And the old man said to me, that's all right, boy, you go right ahead. Uh, you don't pinch and I won't sneeze. But yes, it's, it's a very real person to it. Nobody can say how long the profile hang here. An earth tremor may take him in an instant. Or he may last for many more generations. At the base of his cliff, Profile Lake offers up a second view of the thoughtful old man. Across the notch, eagle cliffs rise out of the valley floor. Eagles once nested in these rocks. Even today, the lucky observer may catch the sight of a descendant of those magnificent birds sailing above the ridges of Franconia Notch. North America's first aerial tramway was built on Cannon Mountain. As you rise out of the valley, the view from the top of the notch opens out to include Maine, Vermont, and the mountains of New York State. Cannon Mountain is also the site of the first engineered ski slopes in the Americas. Blanketed in snow under an electric blue winter sky, the descent into the valley is one of the best side trips in the notch.
hundred million years of revolving seasons. Four hundred million years of fire and ice. Four hundred million years of days. Rainy days. Sunny days. Snowy, icy, bitterly cold days. Days like this day. Four hundred million years of daily change. Franconia Notch. When you see it today, remember, it will never be quite the same again. Oh.